This is my first time at something like this. I've witnessed the footage before doing documentaries. I've seen, uh, I've seen animals die before me before, but I thought this was particularly interesting because of the energy of the group. And um, I was trying to think of another incident where uh, we are brought quite close to the experience of death because it's, if you think about it, it's something that humans tend to avoid as much as possible. We're aware of our own uh, mortality, but um, don't like to think about it too much. Which reminds me of Indian myth that I heard uh, while I was working on, on unity. I think this is quite interesting and it pertains, I think, philosophically to a bit what we saw today, if you'll indulge me. When I was in India shooting Unity, I spoke with uh, I spoke with a guru, and uh, he said that there are um, several different ages of humankind. This is the myth. Now, the importance of the myth is what it points to. It doesn't have to be historically accurate. It doesn't have to have occurred at a particularly geographical location at a certain place or time. The, the importance of a myth is not that it's not true. It's what it does inside you, what it awakens inside you, and hopefully that points to something that has a positive effect. So, he said that there was uh, the first age of humankind, which was the golden age, was ushered in, so this is a, an Indian myth, with a sacred cow. The cow appears in all of its glory, on all four legs, and it ushers in this first age of humankind, and humans were extremely compassionate and kind and loving to one another. There were no doors on any home because there was no need to ever keep anything out. Animals and humans could interact along with nature. The rivers, as the myth explains, flowed with nectar and the soil was sweet to the taste and the people were exquisite to look at. And they never, this is the most important point, never had to even think twice about how to act with one another they acted out of compassion, kindness, sympathy, empathy at all times. And this was considered the beginning and the golden age of humankind. Okay, first age. The second age, uh, the cow appears again at the beginning of the second age, but this time with only three legs. The people are still kind to one another, but for some reason they have to stop and think just for a moment before they, before they make a decision, before they interact, there's a brief hesitation but they still uh, conducted themselves with integrity to one another. And that was the second age. The third age, the cow appears with only two legs. Now, a cow can't stand on two legs, and so a prop is brought in to hold the animal up. And um, according to this teacher, the prop is holy writings, scriptures, poetry, philosophy, the Gita, what have you. This is because humankind has drifted to a point where it's forgotten how to act with one another. It's forgotten how to act with the animals and with its environment and used to actually read something in a book or a text to remind him or herself how to conduct themselves kindly and compassionately with one another. When I heard this, I thought, oh, this is, this is where we are today. And he said that, no, that's, that's not where we are. There is a fourth stage of humankind where the cow appears at the dawn of that age with only one leg. And this is our unfortunate age that we find ourselves in today. Because we do have holy writings. I'm not a religious person, but we do have compassionate, empathetic, holy, inspired, philosophical, poetic, beautiful writings. And we don't read them. And if we do read them, we have trouble even understanding them. And that is the fourth age. And so what begins to happen, what I've seen, you know what I think you have seen, and probably each of you have experienced, apart from the people that are here that were probably born vegan, a reawakening of that first age, a reawakening of that, that golden age of yourself, and that interconnectedness of all, of all beings. And today, at these three different locations, with these three different forms of beings, we witness them becoming very close to their deaths, I'm sure that for those of you who took pictures today and posted them, 
from the time your photos were taken to the time someone else may have seen them, that being was no longer on the earth, that being was no longer in its, its body. And I think that's the power of bearing witness. Now, I've told a few people this today, if there was a way to bottle that in some sort of module and take that out, that might be one of the most effective tools that we've ever had. And, and perhaps, Anita, this is the beginning of something like that, where we can begin to find some way, maybe through technology, to, to transport this experience today to those who aren't here for whatever reason. And I'll just say one last thing, which is actually one, one more myth, and I just heard it recently from a good friend of mine named Damian Mander, who is a narrator in Unity and is an anti-poaching activist in South Africa. He was just in Los Angeles last week, and he shared this story, which I'm going to borrow from him. He says that um, there is another myth that says that when we die, there is a bridge to heaven that we must cross. Before you cross it, before you cross it, is every animal. <clears throat> every animal that you intersected with in this life and that animal will decide whether or not you cross depending on how you treated it thank you for coming Those were some very powerful words.